Welcome, tutors, as we go through chapter one of the textbook, definitions. Now, in order for you to understand why we start off with definitions, even in an education thing, I have to give you a little bit of background on myself. I had three uh, academic pursuits or life endeavors that I went after, and the first was straight math. Now, going into a math class and a math major, that was what I did. I actually got as far as a bachelor's degree in math before I really headed down any other road. Um, when I was a graduate student, I was allowed to teach freshman level. So I was able to start into education. I took some classes and said, hey, I really want to know about this learning thing, education, teaching. It was fun. It was enjoyable. I watched students' eyes light up. I saw how they uh, started at this level and went up to this level. They needed to get here, and I saw them there, and I wanted to let them go incrementally. And I knew I could lead them with those questions all the way up to the top. It was a fascinating problem and better than anything that I discovered in math. It was awesome. And the other one, I did math and I did education, and by golly, that was really kind of cool. So I decided to become a teacher. Well, while I was becoming a, a high school math teacher, taking those education courses, I decided to teach seminary or go through the seminary teaching program, which was amazing. You know, starting up here and then branching off into here after my bachelor's degree, I started down into education and started teaching seminary. And I stayed down here for a year and a half. Now, what was cool about this is that each one of these gave me insights. Math. Why do we like math? Math gave me the appreciation for truth and solid answers and principles um, and enough to cut through, you know, when things are confusing to articulate it and look at it uh, from a very objective point of view. Education. What did I love about education? Well, still teaching. I liked people. I wanted to think about people when I didn't have to think about anything. I wanted to understand how people uh, learned, how they thought, what their feelings were, um, which most mathematicians, uh, they don't worry a whole bunch about that until they get into a classroom. But this was something that was very important. And then when I got down into seminary teaching, it was great because from here I learned great truth. I got into education. It was really hard. There are a lot of good people with a lot of great ideas, but there's not a lot of rigor and definition in what's going on. Well, when I took seminary, all of a sudden I learned that there are true principles of education. Solid truth on how Christ taught when he was here, how to teach the gospel. I studied this exact same topic of education, but from the source of apostles. And it was, it was really neat to see that and to see uh, truth and education being brought down together. It kind of mixed them together and was really neat. Well, I spent some time there and it was great. I didn't end up becoming a seminary teacher. And so I went back and became a high school teacher. So I was in high school and I had six years of wonderful experiences and ended up getting my master's degree in education, writing a thesis. And by the time I got out to here, I was really kind of concerned. I'm like, ah, oh, nobody really knows what's going on in education. They talk and there are theories, but they don't really consider truth. So I went back and went back to math because I appreciated the, the firmness and definitiveness of the math subject. I ended up getting a doctoral degree, a doctorate of arts instead of doctor of philosophy, but a doctoral degree in mathematics. And now I'm at a position where at BYU-Idaho, I get to do math all day long. And not only do I get to do math, I get to teach people about how to teach math, and I get to do it in the context of the gospel. So right here, it's wonderful. So that gives you a little bit of background on me. Now, I do have to tell you, as I went to this program or that program, that there's a divide between math and education. These people, uh, many of them don't really respect each other. Math folks are all about truth and answers, and they're not too much about people. And educators stereotypically will say, hey, mathematician, what is what good is all the knowledge in the world 
if you can't share it with somebody? And they would say, well, what good is all the pontificating about how to teach if you don't know the real answers? So there was a divide and it got bigger and bigger as I went through these different things. So straddling these two worlds for me is enjoyable and exciting and has led to what we have put into this textbook and this course. So that gives you a little bit of background on why we're here. Oftentimes we don't appreciate the answer if we don't know the right question. We're going to start off with a definition of learning. So what does it mean to learn? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about what it means to learn? Does it mean to understand or comprehend? Well, as you can imagine, educators for hundreds of years have talked about what it means to learn. And here are a couple of definitions that have been summarized in an instructor's handbook for a non-education organization. So here are some definitions from the field of education. There are many different versions of it, but this is a collection that was done actually in the FFA, FAA instructor's handbook, aviation instructor's handbook. Very interesting. Learning is a change in behavior as a result of experience. It could be physical and overt or intellectual and attitudinal. Uh, interesting. Learning is a process by which a relatively permanent change in behavior is made. Uh, the change in behavior that results from experience and practice. Uh, gaining knowledge. Look, they used a verb there. That's important. Uh, developing. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, the process of acquiring knowledge or skill through study experience or teaching. Notice this one has a lot of conditions on whether or not something's been learned. It's very interesting. Uh, and you'll notice it starts referring to behaviorism and there's cognitivism and constructivism and all sorts of isms out there on what people have thought were learning. Uh, here's cognition resulting from experience and directly influencing behavior. So if it doesn't directly influence behavior, they don't think it's learning. Anyway, uh, I just want you to understand that in the field of education, when you start doing it, this is uh, this is what you get into. There are so many different ways of defining learning. And you guys have kind of thought about it. Hey, I've learned that, or I haven't learned that, or that horse learned to jump a fence, or the dog learned to fetch a frisbee. Uh, think about these and how difficult it might be if we can't settle on what it actually means to learn. In my history and math classes, we always started out with a definition of a limit, say in calculus, or definition of a derivative, or in higher math classes, definition of a group, or definition of a field, or anything like that. And they're the fundamental concepts of what we need to learn, what we need to study. And so, for me, this was a pursuit that took decades trying to find what is learning. We can't talk about education if we're not all on the same page. I was sitting in a in a faculty meeting with President Kim Clark, and uh, he probably doesn't even know how much of an impact he had in settling that decade-long debate on what learning is. He was asked a question by one of the faculty, and he answered it with, no, you don't understand. A student learns material when he produces material. And I was like, whoa, produces? Yeah, when you produce knowledge, skill, or a feeling. Now, immediately when he said that, I was like, oh my word, does that really encount encompass everything that learning is? So I went back through all of my education textbooks. It, would it work in behaviorism? Work, would it work in cognitivism? Would it work in all the fields that education purports to support? And indeed, produce knowledge, skill, or a feeling. That is what it is to learn. Now notice that this is broad enough to encompass animals learning tricks and uh, teachers learning patience and students learning particular skills or knowledge. It's not when you understand it, it's when you know it. And some type of learning may be physical, like learning how to shoot a free throw. It may not be cognitive at all. And you may not have to, and once you've practiced it enough, you may not have to do it for you to show that you have learned it. Anyway, great definition. It is to produce. Well, what does this mean for a tutor? Well, this means that here is your goal. Your job 
is not to present your job is not to help your job is to guide someone to produce which gives us the definition of the word teach teach it is to guide another to learn now notice what happens here with this paradigm and this has been discussed in education for decades as well they will say "Ooh, we're going from a teaching centered university to a learning centered university meaning that they're saying oh instead of focusing so much on what the teacher does let's see if we can focus on what the student does actually it's a little bit deeper than that we need to focus on what the student does in order to produce the desired knowledge skill or feeling think about this even in a gospel context our goal here on this earth is to learn patience, charity, kindness. It's not enough that we act kind, that we act patient. We are to actually be producing these feelings and have them come from us. This definition of learning and the subsequent corollary of teaching should be at the foundation of everything we do as tutors because that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing is helping others to learn. We're not in it for ourselves.